Welcome back, hard forkers. What a forking a week it's been. I'll explain more about that in a moment, but welcome back to my two wonderful co-hosts, Leanne and Jesse. Hi. How you doing? A lot to discuss today, but uh, the primary focus of our show is the charts and trading. We've got Leanne to talk us through that today, so I'm going to throw it over to you, Leanne. Let's get into it. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. I'm still not really convinced of what it's going to do yet. So, you know, I still don't know, which is why I've got that there. The Bitcoin dominance charts are still low, which I'll bring that chart up in a moment. For me, it could still revisit this 50K zone and test the bottom of the new channel that I've made. Uh, And there's still people calling for a 40K retest. But for now, on my 343 minute chart, we have cleared uh, an entry on my method of SMAs. So we did get an entry point, but I am watching it very closely as I'm not so convinced uh, about the strength. We had a nice pop the other day, but I'm still watching it and uh, I don't really have any clear direction as of yet. Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's just really operating in a range, uh, sort of that 50 to 60K mark. So a bit of a field day for the uh, the scalp traders uh, and a, a little more difficult for people that don't know how they're trading. And on that note, people, if you are an experienced trader, please use our link below to buy bit. And uh, make sure you follow Leanne and her group as well. Link below to that, the Crypto Jungle. While we're on Bitcoin, could I just quickly bring up the stock to flow uh, model? The stock to flow ratio is basically, uh, it it looks at the flow of new production. uh, So it can be used in in mining gold, etc. as well. Now, Bitcoin's price, as you can see on this chart, has pretty much historically followed the stock to flow ratio. And as you can see here, we're actually just slightly below it at the moment. So looking at this, uh, we are still well on track for that magic figure of 100K. There you go. Back to you. Yes, it's always a good one to zoom out and look at that one again. That's a nice reminder. At the, at the moment where we just can't figure out what's going on with Bitcoin. Yeah. It's, uh, that, that is that nice zoom out. We're on track. I just thought I'd quickly bring up my friend Joe Saz tweeted this the other day just... He had the uh, Bitcoin dominance at a low of around 46. And we've got in this pink line here the Ethereum dominance going up. So that was a nice one for you, Sean, to get you all excited about Ethereum dominance. (laughs) I've got some comments coming up on Ethereum in a moment, but we'll uh, we'll do that after the ETH chart. Yep, we'll bring that up now. Here we have the ETH chart, uh, the star of the week. And it's nice to, again, recap and look at everything that has transpired. So we did hit the targets that we were aiming for here on my fib extensions, the 2.5K range. We visited down to 2 again. We, we busted through that uh, resistance. We've broken through the 3K barrier, and now we're just hovering in no man's land at the moment. My cautionary um, area for a pullback would probably be around 3.7 area, which I've marked there. And I would maybe expect a retest of the middle of the channel back down to the 3K area if we were to get one, uh, or it could keep just charging up. But again, it's a, it's a wait and see. And I'll also redo my FIB extensions then, but I'm just leaving them there for now just to see where we're at. So uh, well done, anyone that held ethereum when everything else was popping off and it was a patience play for sure but you're getting the fruits of your labor now jesse was trying to get uh, 50 bucks worth of ethereum off me at 2 30 this morning oh. i was too lazy to walk over to the uh my safe and pull my ledger out to transfer some ethereum to my metamask to do a thing i was like sean just give me some 50 bucks and he, he thought i was kidding i i did think you were kidding yes yeah, just the, the, the reason for that, uh, people, if they're confused, uh, it was to do with the Uniswap version 3 launched today. And okay. uh, yeah, lots of rumors about if you had pulled uh, or if you were in a liquidity pool on Uniswap, then maybe you were going to get another airdrop, uh, as happened back last September. So kind of waiting with bated breath because I, I did actually go and do that. I, uh, I pulled some ETH and, and some Uni. So I was expecting some big prize this morning, Leanne, but it hasn't happened yet. So lucky I didn't send Jesse 50 bucks. I would have done it too if Sean just 
gave his mate fifty dollars worth of Ethereum, but uh, <laughs> I guess he's been uh, lazy and not cheap, worth so that. he didn't get it. <laughs> you airdrop boys, you. Oh yeah, that's our next show, airdrop boys. Airdrop boys. <laughs> Now, I put on a request, Leanne, to have a look at um, Bitcoin Cash, which probably surprised a lot of people, but uh, we'll see what's going on there. Oh, as I said to you, Sean, uh, I'm a trader, so I have no opinion. Is it tradable? Is it something I'll keep long term? No, but is it tradable? Yes. That's exactly the point. Exactly. So I'll bring up the daily chart in a moment, but just on the four hour, uh, it's broken through some local resistance around the 1100 zone and it's hit the 100% extension on my fibs. So it is looking nice. It it will, as I talk about, um, potentially revisit this breakout zone. So on a pullback, if it's something you're interested in, that's a good place to scale in. And the next... Uh, zone would be around eighteen hundred dollars on according to my charts and i've just you know put, is it tradable yes do i want to no it's not a tradable thing for me but i know for many people it's a it's a one that is starting to move and the bitcoin pairing actually looks quite nice too but i'll just zoom out to show you the multi-year it's interesting to note leanne as we go into this multi-year chart that at one point bitcoin cash was 10% of the value of Bitcoin. So if we extrapolate that out, that would give Bitcoin Cash a price of, what, uh, $5,800. Uh, so, you know. Look, if we, if we go into another big cycle, it's definitely got loads of potential upwards of $4,000 if it's going to break that ceiling. So... Uh, yeah, if you're interested in it, 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 it does look good. It's starting to show some strength. Yeah, so obviously I bleat on about being a Bitcoin and Ethereum, being able to sleep easy at night. Um, but I kind of have won the Hypocrite of the Week award and I reduced some of my ETH position this week and did go into some other alts. Now, their Bitcoin Cash was one of them uh, and I've made a nice little gain on that. Uh, I'm staying on that trade. I think it's got more upside. And what I, okay, once again, a bit of hypocrisy here, but I, it's quite interesting. If you look at the top 10 movers, obviously this is a weekly show. So I just, as a matter of interest, looked at the top 10 movers over the last week. And at the top of the show, I said it's been one hell of a forking week. What I, what I was alluding to here, let's have a look at the top 10 movers. In those top 10 we've got ethereum classic which is up 175 percent for those of you that don't know ethereum classic is i suppose you would deem it the original chain uh there was a hack uh the dow hack it was called 50 million dollars worth of eth was taken the ethereum foundation decided to uh fork and that's how we've got eth and eth, ETH classic now so Ethereum Classic continued that same chain. Uh, they they factored in that that 50k uh, theft. So that's that's effectively how Ethereum uh, and Ethereum Classic forked. But also in these top ten movers, uh, obviously the Doge is in there. We'll get to that in a moment. But we've got also got Bitcoin Gold and Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. So four of the top ten movers this week are the uh, are forks of uh, of Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin. Now I simply don't really know uh, why this is the case. I suspect there could be uh, new retail investors buying these things, not not really possibly understanding what they are. Obviously, lots of drama back in two seventeen with the uh, with the Bitcoin forks, and obviously Roger Veer became a bit of a hate figure. I actually like Roger; he's been on this channel before. Uh, I think he's been an integral part of the industry, but he got a lot of flack for uh, the use of Bitcoin. So he's got Bitcoin.com, um, very popular site. In fact, we're going to look at some news articles from there in a moment. So yes, there are some things happening on Bitcoin Cash. Um, we've got Kim.com launching a major project, using it uh, very shortly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just found that quite interesting that in the top 10 movers, we've got, got these four forks and the doge. <laughs> And the well, if you will. think about it, there's there's still going to be 
someone who who thinks it's weird that you find it strange, right? I look, uh, all, all they got to do is look back at that, that interview you did in uh, our uh, Bitcoin documentary, which is available on the Hard Forking channel. You can check it out, guys. But that interview you, you did with, who was that from the Bitcoin Cash community? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like a community manager uh, in, in Copenhagen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and until I saw that doc, uh, that that interview, I was thinking, you know, what's Bitcoin Cash? What's any of this? But it's always interesting when you mm. hear someone who's knowledgeable about it speak about it. And then at least I went from like, uh, you know, what is this crap to like, okay, maybe there's a leg Thank to you. stand on. Mm. It's actually a good segue because next we're going to look at the chart for uh, a, a, a crypto credit card and the associated token. But leading into that, just for people that maybe are new here, just a real quick explanation. So we had these Bitcoin forks back in, in 2017. Now that effectively came about, it was a debate over the block size, but at its real root, the argument was two different two different economic theories. So you had the, uh, the, the BTC or Bitcoin Core that basically uh, wanted the Bitcoin blockchain to effectively do what it's doing now, to become uh, a highly secure uh, blockchain that, effectively uh, has addressed this the store of value this scarce asset digital gold if you will whereas the bitcoin cash side of the the equation was much more about uh using bitcoin as a a, a payment mechanism as cash now the original white paper obviously talks about digital cash and there's that argument that goes on to this day so it is quite interesting to see Bitcoin Cash uh, roll back into the top 10 here at the moment. Uh, Bitcoin SV has made some big price moves as well. Now, very quickly, Bitcoin SV is a fork of Bitcoin Cash. Now, that came about because within that community, there were a lot of arguments around some anonymity features that were built in. So uh, the Bitcoin Cash uh, project has got some privacy features. Bitcoin SV is very much targeted at a, at a corporate crowd. Um, so they, you know, there are different use cases for those three different bitcoins, and uh, you know, this is quite amazing for me to see as we're we're getting into uh, the, this bull run here to see those projects sort of rearing their heads again. So watch the space on those ones, I guess. So on that note, Leanne, uh, let's let's have a look at the next chart, and we can have a chat about payment rails and usage of crypto. Mm. And uh, the reason, guys, I'm showing this chart is because we've been over the weeks talking about uh, our portfolios you know we've got trading portfolios we've got longer term investment portfolios and things like that now this app actually happens to be one in my longer term bucket so i thought i'd share it with you um i know we've talked about emberly which we're going to get um some people on the show about that emberly card which is a a working product um this one just happens to be uh an interesting one that came onto my radar last year um, because CZ from Binance acquired them um, and that's the swipe group, um, SXP, traded in the crypto sphere as. And that came, anything that CZ touches, uh, I kind of thought, well, I, I want in on this. Uh, and it's, it's a really interesting one. So I'll bring the chart up in a moment. So it's a payment processing system. I know it's still getting lots of um, solutions built into it, but it's a, a DeFi payment system. Um, they've got merchant facilities uh, that are competitive to the normal visa processing facilities uh, that's 90% discount or something compared to what merchants already pay, uh, you know, and their FTX have also just partnered with them. So I think they've got a lot of good things on the horizon. So this is the SXP chart, and this is the only price history we have uh, from 2020, Sean, and I believe you got in around this region. Is that right? I did. And as we, you know, we've been talking about, it's uh, interesting because it is an ever-evolving space. There's lots of competition. A lot of the products do the same thing. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, which one has the most functionality out in the world. So I started acquiring it, you know, down in this zone. And I actually like what this chart is doing. It's stair-stepping up. It's not doing parabolic moves. I've said it before. I get really freaked out when things go parabolic because it's 
pumpy and dumpy to me, whereas this thing's steadily climbing. And because I just found out about the founder burning his tokens, it just gave me a lot more confidence in holding this for a lot longer. And my um, aim with a, a trade and in, I'll call it trade slash longer term investment is once I reach a price I'm happy with, which for now I'm sort of aiming up towards a $10 mark, I'll take out a large chunk and I'll keep some for the long term. And that, that that's a, a free trade. Like it's tokens that are free because I've made my money back and some more. So um, it's kind of a merged trade for me that I will hang on to a few of those. And I don't do that with many because I don't like marrying my coins after 2017. Um, but this one, I really like the, the product and what's happening. Yeah, so Jesse, uh, somebody asked you a question on Twitter uh, after our show the other week. They were like, you know, what what's happening where you convert uh, crypto to fiat? And it, it is actually something that I, I see popping up a lot. I mean, for years in this space, we've talked about, you know, a merchant accepting Bitcoin or, or Bitcoin Cash saying, you know, we are the instant sort of settlement, buy a coffee with it, et cetera. So it's fascinating to see how the crypto credit card space is going to evolve because does it then make businesses like Travala kind of null and void where you're paying directly with crypto? Because if you can just use the you know, Visa card with crypto on it, um, you know, crypto accepted here and directly to merchant. How relevant will that be? Yeah, I mean, the other question. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a way of doing this, but when the difference between t converting your crypto into fiat or buying something with your crypto, what what is the difference when it comes to taxation? It's obviously a centralized system that you're using when you're purchasing something with a credit card, right? But what is the difference, you think, between taking it out and converting it into the US dollar, let's say, as opposed to buying a microwave? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of the magic question, isn't it? But obviously, we're, we've got a whole heap of regulation, in my opinion, uh, that's going to come thick and fast in the very near future, certainly this year. Um, so, I mean, look, whoever can really dominant, dominate that sort of edge of the network sort of payment rail type scenario is going to be a massive winner. And if, if, uh, if uh, that particular project does that, Leanne, yeah, I think $10 would be conservative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's a fascinating one. I mean, we're seeing Visa, you know, they put out, a, 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 there was a headline there, I think about a week or two ago, and it was quoting Visa saying, we're very, very, very bullish on, they, they were the, the words they used, uh, bullish on, on crypto. I mean, they, they've they've settled payments, uh, of crypto payments on, on well, sorry, Visa payments on the network a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's a space that's going to move quickly and picking winners there and yeah that may well be one of them is probably a good move and mm -hmm. as i say it sort of you know it's, confuses me a wee bit you know something like a bitcoin cash which is all about sort of going out to all those individual merchants trying to get them to accept yeah. it directly um yeah i mean if you can load it all onto a, a, a visa and use that payment rail spin your crypto that way how have you two sort of exited to, to fiat in the past? I mean, that for me was always a major piss off because of the fees that you, you know, you, you, you were getting charged, uh, you know, coming in or in and out from, well, from the crypto space. So I don't know what, uh, what the general consensus is these days on local Bitcoin, but I've had success with that in the past. I've never had trouble with it. Uh, the, the what is it the markup or the markdown by by whoever it is that i'm selling it to is not extraordinary and uh it's always been a quick and easy process and it's basically peer-to-peer -peer, right mm. and and yes jesse's asking you for 50 dollars of ethereum because remember everything that he has to get is a gift just remember this it's going to be 10 that's, right. that's going to be worth 10 grand in a few years no way i'm doing that i was getting 50 well, bucks off me you, oh, you probably owe me 10 grand <laughs> Yeah. Right, so uh, I believe we've got one more chart today, haven't we, people? Um, yes. And it, and, it, and it comes from our, the new segment of the show. What, what are we calling it? The the if only or the, the, the if only segment instead of up only because I've even noticed people are getting up only tattoos now. Um, no, this one's the if only. This is the reality segment where we 
get to lament about the if only I kept, if only I did, because we've all got them. And and it's the worst when someone starts the story. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've all we've all heard this. You didn't keep it. You didn't. You didn't. Da 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 da. So. I'm about to share a story of mine when I show the charts, but you, you're quite welcome to leave your um, if only sob story in the comments below and you'll get a lot of sympathy. So let's let's bring up the chart first. Yeah, so here's our Doge USDT chart. And yes, in the comments I've written SNL with Elon, are we going to get to a dollar? So Saturday night live uh, US time. And, you know, it brings about questions of crowd mindsets, utility, how does something derive its value? We've been talking about BCH, like its, its functionality. Same thing with Doge. What is its utility? If, if, if the crowd consensus is it has value, then I guess it has value. Uh, TikTok and Robinhood, um, we know the game stopped. We know how that ended. So is this going to be the same? And I've also um, was reading on Twitter that um, 13 addresses hold 46% of the entire supply of Doge. One address and has got what, 33%. Yeah, well, I, di I didn't know the exact thing, but, yeah, I wrote one address is 28% or 33%. Yeah, so, crazy. And then what? what what's so... Well, what happens when those people want to offload? And that, that's, you know, the concerning reality of this and maybe they won't because the narrative is so strong but I none of us know um but we usually we've got a track record of seeing how these things end something like doge I feel like if you're going to invest in it I haven't done this but the way I would do it is just put some money into doge and then stop looking at it um and hodl it like you're hodling bitcoin because like uh, again that's coming from someone who's not really like a day trader and stuff like that but but it's almost it, Doge is just so weird and unpredictable, and on one hand totally pointless, but on the other hand, the talk of the town. Because yeah, it could go to a dollar. It could also drop to friggin' nothing tomorrow. So it's hard to tell. Um, but uh, for one thing's for sure, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a point to it other than t comedy. But some people think that it's more important than Bitcoin. So bleh, clown world. Yeah. And a friend of mine was recently in an elevator. And you know when, when people are talking about things in an elevator, it's reached a new level of the public. And he said they were just showing their phones to each other and, and saying, look how much money I made off this Dogecoin. You've got to get into it. And, yeah, th this, is the, this is what's happening. Uh, which brings me to the if only sob story. So my, my biggest uh, sob story, if only story, is the Doge one and I'm constantly being reminded of it in my face the last few weeks. Uh, two years ago I, I bought seven figures, like I had seven figures worth of Doge uh, and I had this absolute voice out of nowhere go, you need to buy this and you need to hang on to it for a long time. Oh. And I've had people calling me insane because I'm very practical. I'm a trader and that is not a good trading decision. <laughs> so I did hang on to it for two years. And then I had um, a moment at the start of the year where I was listening to uh, a podcast from a senior trader who was giving some very nice lessons about how one should trade and look at their portfolio. And I listened to the podcast and he was very conservative and he said after a few years, if things haven't moved, it's an opportunity cost and you should really reallocate those funds and blah, 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 blah. So I, I stopped listening to the podcast. I had a walk on the beach and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's right. Oh, it doesn't make sense to hang on to this anymore. And I sold it like a week before the doge elon jumped on the train and uh and now i'm constantly reminded of my misfortune and no one wants to hear the if only story because everybody's got them <laughs> so doge is my in my face uh like good on you if you held it and i'm really happy for you but um yes that's that's my biggest mistake of this season Leanne, if it makes you feel any better, 98% of the planet have an if-only story still. 
because they don't have any crypto. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> true. It's true. Last year when there was uh, some sort of altcoin bull run going on, I had, I bought into something that – it was the only coin on, on all the charts that was doing this, where I, I, I don't think I – before then and since then have I ever seen anything like it because it was – I don't know even how I got in, maybe through a tip, but I got in at like $2 and, and it started growing over the course of the next month and a half, two months to like $30, $40, $50. And, it, and if you looked at the graph, it wasn't doing that. It wasn't doing anything. It was just this. Oh. And, I, and I remember I commented with Tashawn and, and everyone in our group saying, guys, this is backed by Rockefeller. I, I was making huge, I was like I, I could see how much my initial investment had get, grown and I'm, you know, I'm thinking like I could just sell all this right now. Again, it wasn't doing this; it was just doing this. So I was thinking, okay, it's backed by Rockefeller. Maybe he's just pumping it uh, full of money, and let's see how long it goes. And yeah, same thing. I, I, I went, I went to like forty-five, fifty dollars, huge gains, and uh, then it dropped to nothing. And I didn't make anything. <laughs> I remember this and now. You were trying to get me to uh, dive into it. It was worth nothing now, was it? It was a lot of process. If you had it on a, on a, on a, you had it on an exchange, you had to put in all sorts of information and know your customer to change it to another exchange. Uh -huh. It was all this bullshit. And it's like, it was almost not worth the $5,000 that I would have made just to go through all the rigmarole. But uh, <laughs> again, if I had sold it earlier or if you had gotten in and sold it on time, it would have been great, but it was just yet another, yet another lesson that uh, it's better to pull out early, if you know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> than, than be too late. <laughs> a motto for many things, Jesse. Yes. So a lot, lot, lot of news out of uh, out of uh, your your birthplace at the moment, mate. Um, Pretty interesting as well. We've got uh, FTX, uh, which we spoke about extensively last week uh, today, announcing that uh, they are sponsoring the Miami Heat. Pretty big news. And also Grayscale today announcing they are sponsoring the New York Giants NFL team. So uh, a Mainstream. bit of a tale of two cities here because the, uh, the while, while those are great pieces of news out of New York and Miami, there's also some rather distressing news. And I, I, you can find this particular article in numerous publications, but the one that I've brought up here uh, is, is, I think it's some sort of environmentalist publication talking about New York uh, proposing a bill, which I believe has been put in front of the Senate uh, Monday, that may well ban the mining of Bitcoin in New York for possibly up to three years while they assess the carbon emissions from Bitcoin mining. Uh, now, the reason I want to bring that one up is, I, I, look, t to me, it's a, a, this article that you can see here, I, I think is poorly written. It, it, it doesn't address both sides of the equation at all. But, you know, coming back to these other use cases of Bitcoin, and I don't want to get political here, but you do hear it said from a lot of people in the Bitcoin community that one of the beauties of this asset is it is effectively money that you control um, as opposed to fiat or your local currency. And if you look at how fiat is often spent, a lot of it does go to effectively bombing people in other countries, um, whereas with, with this new asset class, these cryptos, this money you control, especially Bitcoin, uh, I like it for that. Yeah, I mean, okay, the environmental costs, man, people need to open, open their eyes here. Uh, Elon Musk has been talking about this recently. You know, there is a strong move to renewable energy sources for Bitcoin mining. Personally, and this is something I spoke extensively about with people back in 2016, uh, I actually think there, the Bitcoin mining may well drive a lot of innovation in energy production because ultimately, whoever can get the cheapest form of energy is going to make the most from mining crypto so come on f figure this out i can't believe regulators are, are going off half cock here maybe there's a a, a deeper issue uh, maybe they're using carbon emissions as a uh, a veiled attempt to uh slow this down thoughts people i guess it's like that age-old question of uh you know why did it why did it take so long for governments to embrace marijuana couldn't the government benefit from bitcoin instead of fighting or or trying to freak out about it or not even understand it i i mean they couldn't they be making the same type of the huge gains off of every time we make money they could be making money mm. not like i promote or like that 
Mm-hmm. But instead of instead of just going headbutting against something that can't be stopped, why not just work with it? Yeah. yeah, correct. I think we're unstoppable now. And to your point about the sports, um, I think last cycle, I think the biggest celebrity was Katy Perry maybe with her nails. But now we've got sports stars wanting half their salary in Bitcoin. We've, you know, it's, it's, so, it's, pushing the point of so mainstream that if they're pulling out things like environmental factors, we, we know they're scraping the barrel for things to the FUD. Okay, and to close it out today, people, I just want to show this article here. It's basically something that I've had a bit of an inside track on for, for quite a while. Banks uh, in the US, hundreds of them, are about to uh, facilitate buying, selling, and the custody of uh, Bitcoin and crypto assets. Now, from a trading point of view, um, uh, for me, this is going to skyrocket the price. I know from doing the handholds with friends and family, you know, they've literally wanted me physically there to show them how to do this. It's been too intimidating for for way too long, and that's the case for most people. It's just mm. too difficult to figure out how to onboard. So, if you can call your bank, uh, say, "Hey, I want to want to buy ten grand worth of Bitcoin," bang, done. Uh, what's that going to do to the price, people? Uh, scarce asset, limited supply, increasing demand. Yeah, needs to be easy. So, last week we uh, spoke about the Audius platform, Jesse, and I saw you tweeting out that you've got some of your music up on, on there now. I'm still in the freshman stage of the of learning about Audius, and so far the crypto side of it hasn't even really come into play. Uh, but what I have learned is that it's a community uh, based platform for sure, and all the tips and information I've got from people in that community is uh, if you want to grow in the Audius platform and you want to uh, really get a foot in the door and start like you know becoming a, a player in the space, you have to become part of the community, which means uh, temporarily don't worry as much about your music when in this community and just more worry about meeting people, having conversations and being part of this uh, this network because um, it's not a situation where you, you upload your music and then you just kick back and wait to uh, gain fans and become rich off audio token. It's more like you join the platform and you become a member, an active member of society, as, as you will, in the audience uh, network and platform. So that's, uh, that's, that's my progress report so far, is that I've, I've been joining discords uh, and, and following kind of uh, the, the different avenues one might take if they, if they do become part of this community. So there we are, and uh, yeah, and we can... Uh, run out this episode with a track off my uh, EP Shelter. Uh, Why don't we play the song Shelter? Let's go. Let's do it. See you soon, people.